our final reader of this evening and the second member of the Jesus and Mary chain won her second grade writing contest for the groundbreaking story, The Stolen Princess. It's considered her definitive work because her teacher laminated it. <laughs> As an adult, she performs stand-up, improv, and sketch comedy around Chicago with Salsation and One Group Mind. She's been featured in Beast Women Cabaret, 100 Proof Comedy, and Mortified. Please give a warm Tuesday funk welcome to Mary Zemitis. <laughs> tall boots tonight. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm the other Catholic girl named Mary. <laughs> nice to be here. Um, I'm really glad to be here and I'm glad you guys are all here, uh, especially on election night. Um, so today I learned two things about Americans from Facebook. Um, I learned that people are really proud that they voted. <laughs> And I learned that Americans get really pissed when they don't get a sticker after voting. <laughs> um, it's just so American. Like, there are countries in the world where people literally kill each other and start wars to get the right to vote, and we're mad that we didn't get a present. <laughs> um, but... Even if you guys didn't get that present today, you're here, so here's your real present. Tuesday <laughs> Funk. Um, as Bill mentioned in my intro, I am a stand-up comedian, and when I do stand-up, I like to tell as many true and incriminating stories as possible. Uh, so this one I'm gonna read tonight is uh, an essay based on one of my favorite stories to tell people. In high school, I was a very particular kind of nerd. I was a nerd for Jesus, a member of the God Squad, a straight up Jesus freak. High school is the time in your life when you're supposed to rebel against your parents. You drink, smoke, do drugs, have sex, Engage in general tomfoolery and shenanigans. You break the rules. Not me, though. I have always been a goody two-shoes. I hate breaking the rules. It doesn't fill me with adrenaline, it just gives me a stomach ache. <laughs> Therefore, to rebel, to rebel against my parents, I decided to become super religious and hold my newfound morality over their heads. <laughs> my parents are both South Side Irish Chicago, Chicago Irish Catholics, and my entire family is confirmed in the same religion. So to make them mad, I converted to non-denominational evangelical Christianity. <laughs> Hope Community Bible Church was one of those modern, warm, fuzzy kind of churches. It was a cool church. They had talent shows, scavenger hunts, a guy playing electric guitar during worship, and a youth group where you could talk about how parents just don't understand your newfound Christianity. <laughs> it was real rock and roll. <laughs> and I loved it. The church gave me a place where I felt like I finally belonged. And it gave me so many new rules to follow. <laughs> I was particularly passionate about the rules concerning sexual morality. You see, in high school, I carried an ATM card in my purse. It stood for abstinence till marriage card. <laughs> Most of my friends were trying to lose their V-cards. I had mine laminated. 
every summer my youth group went to Bible camp. Now the camp had various rules concerning boy-girl interactions, some stranger than other. The notorious six-inch rule reigned supreme at camp, dictating that all members of the opposite sex must keep a minimum distance of six inches from one another at all times. Even those that were dating ha weren't even allowed to hold hands at camp. This became sort of a game for us, and you can often hear girls giggling loudly, six inch rule, six inch rule, <laughs> while running away from a boy who was trying to chase them while simultaneously lag a half foot behind. <laughs> Furthermore, we girls had to dress modestly. Tank tops and spaghetti straps were strictly verboten, as were midriff bearing swimsuits. Now halfway through my junior year of camp, the powers that be suddenly instituted a new rule. The camp was set up so that boys and girls bunks were on opposite sides of the camp, but they were connected with a bathroom area in the middle. In the middle of camp, uh, which was a week long, the girls were informed that we were not allowed to use the bathroom facilities after we had changed into our pajamas. You see, if the boys saw us in our pajamas, <laughs> it would make them think of us lying in bed. Impure thoughts. <laughs> Raise your wife. <laughs> but the thing is, the boys were not given the same rules. Even though I was a full blown Jesus freak at this time, I still thought to myself, this rule is kind of bullshit. <laughs> They were 16-year-old boys. Like, 16-year-old boys can pop a boner if it's too windy outside. <laughs> and who, who says that us girls aren't having the exact same impure thoughts? I am very creative and imaginative. <laughs> Why do we have to be the gatekeepers of male sexuality? <laughs> Preach it. <laughs> but even though I thought that it was kind of bullshit, I still, I pushed those questions aside and I bought what they were selling me. Because I vowed to live a chaste and pure life and to glorify God in all of my actions. Cut to present day. <laughs> I am 26 years old. I have a degree in women's studies. I'm agnostic and I don't want to brag, but I have totally had sex. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Take care of our <laughs> my crisis of faith began when my church had, of all things, a sex scandal. This is shocking stuff, I know. It turned out that our pastor of the church had been frequenting a massage parlor. <laughs> but in his defense, the hooker was probably wearing pajamas at the time. <laughs> Can't blame him. He was fired immediately after his wife found the credit card charges and reported him to our church. 
And I couldn't believe that I had listened to this man, that I had followed his teachings. Rules that taught me that my body was dirty and an instrument of sin. When even he couldn't follow those same rules. And if he was wrong about that, then maybe everything was kind of bullshit. I ultimately decided I wasn't going to listen to everything they told me. I could follow my own morality and what I thought was right. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a goody two-shoes to this day, and I still stick to the rules. But these days, they're my rules. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Tuesday Funk for November 6th.